The Alien franchise has been a little hit and miss with its video game adaptations over the years. However, while some have fallen a little short, there have been some that provided players with hours of entertainment, gore, jump scares, and the tense sense of horror that made the early movies so great. This year, we've been given a co-op third-person shooter looking to immerse gamers into the rich and dangerous universe. Oh, damn. Jesus. Oh, ho. We're the Bullet Sponges and we are back with another Play or Pass, where we jump in and give you our thoughts on whether we think a game's worth your money or one to leave alone. And if you feel like joining myself and Nex for more co-op reviews and let's plays, feel free to subscribe and join us each week as we review and play through all sorts of different titles. Today, Nex and I are going to be taking a look at Aliens Fire Team Elite, an action-packed wave shooter that plays a little like Gears of War. The Gears comparison primarily comes from the third-person shooter-style gameplay, as well as some of the cover mechanics. And while there are obvious differences between the two games, for me it's probably the closest comparison to make. Aliens Fireteam Elite nods heavily to existing material from the Aliens universe, with the mech suit present in the home hub, references to the newer movies like Prometheus as well as older ones, and the design and feel of the levels really capturing the atmosphere that fans of the franchise know and love. You're also given a decent amount of depth as you play through the game. There are five different classes to choose from, each with very different sets of abilities. You have a number of weapons, weapon attachments, class customizations, and consumable equipment for you to customize and kit out your fireteam operator and head out to exterminate some aliens. Released in August 2021, Aliens Fireteam Elite has excited both fans of alien and third-person shooters. So let's find out if it's a play or a pass. When looking for a game to face off against huge swathes of enemies, there are a few themes that capture this concept more than the Aliens franchise. And to that effect, Aliens Fireteam Elite have created an environment both visually and audibly nostalgic of the movies themselves, sparking delight in fans such as Bias who could point out easter eggs and similarities as we played through together. First off, creating your character has a number of preset options that, for a game like this, is a more than adequate amount to put your spin on what you want to look like. You'll find yourself anchored to this hub, where you can form an intimate squad size of three with your mates, set up your next mission, buy gear and cosmetics, and speak to NPCs to fill in plot points between missions. I'd say the movement is reminiscent of Gears of War. It's third person, instead of jumping you have a dodge roll, the same button vaulting you over objects, and you can take cover when needed. Moving in different directions is perfectly responsive, actually almost too responsive. You don't quite get a feel for the weight of your character, which in my opinion isn't detrimental to the gameplay at all, but it's something I noticed throughout. Gunplay is the game's standout feature in our opinion. This isn't the case necessarily at the start, but as you get used to the weaknesses of the enemies and the different weapons you unlock, we started to realise what a blast this game turned out to be. Everything is played in a fairly up-close and personal third-person perspective, with each weapon being hip-fired and aiming just a zoomed-in version of this, even on the sniper. And I think this highlights the nature of the gunplay you can expect. There are critical shots in the game, but you're less rewarded for your precise aim as much as other shooters. It's more about the satisfaction of mowing down countless adversaries, and in the case of the aliens, staying away from their acidic inside as it covers the floor. Nice. You get good visual feedback that doesn't clutter the screen when you land a killing blow or a critical shot, and you have a bunch of useful tools to further your effectiveness in combat. Every player will have a consumable button where you can aid your team with looted gear that you find throughout the missions. This might be a landmine or even a deployable turret. Much like Left 4 Dead or Back 4 Blood, which this game has a number of similarities with, you can carry one health pack at a time, which can be used on yourself or a teammate. And if a buddy loses all their health, they go into a down state where an ally can pick them up again. Next we have five class specific loadouts, with each class having a specialised role on the team. Every class is strong at what they do but not essential to completing the game. The gunner uses a rifle and close quarters weapon, has a team wide fire rate and reload boost and a frag grenade along with a passive which amplifies their damage as long as they continue to deal damage. The demolisher is a heavy class using an assault rifle and a heavy gun option which includes the infamous auto aiming smart gun as well as being able to fire mini rockets at a location and stagger nearby enemies with a blast wave. They also come with a stacking gun damage multiplier linked with using abilities. The technician plays as a utility character equipped with a handgun and a close quarters weapon, using their turrets and a thrown device that shocks and slows enemies. The class also passively reduces damage taken by enemies near the turret. The dock is a support with an invaluable healing station and a party-wide stim that boosts accuracy, stamina regen and move speed. 
They use a rifle and handgun combo and have reduced ability recharge benefit when near each teammate. And finally, once you complete the game, you'll unlock Recon using rifle and close quarters weapons. They have a drone to reveal enemies and a drone to replenish ammo. They also passively increase weapon stability if they get two headshots within a 10 second window. All classes have upgrade and customization potential through this perk grid where you need to find the best fit as you unlock more perks and space on the grid. You do get an interesting number of weapons to try out, my favorites being the sniper and the flamethrower. The latter of which I unlocked right as we decided to up the difficulty which includes friendly fire. Let's just say, Bias and I didn't talk for a while after that game. I think as well as the customization of loadouts and weapons, the difference in difficulty really transforms the experience too, as you have to play the game differently. For example, in the standard mode the dock isn't so valuable, as the other classes in the health packs can take care of themselves the majority of the time. Health becomes a lot more of a scarce resource as the difficulty increases. This is also due to friendly fire, meaning supporting loadouts increase in value, and I'm told I can't use the flamethrower anymore. The lack of variety in general was questionable for the first hour or so, which to our relief turned out to not be completely true. Although the chapters themselves had times of feeling slightly repetitive, each chapter has its own architectural theme and enemies, and we were particularly happy to move on from the claustrophobic halls in the first chapter to the more open settings in the second, including reaching into the alien's lore for completely different enemy types. This lended to the benefits of tailoring your loadout for the mission, particularly when coming back to harder difficulties, as well as using the challenge card system, allowing you to tie a negative effect to the mission to improve the reward you receive at the end. This for example might increase recoil of all weapons or remove the HUD from your screen. As refreshing as it was to have a change between chapters, the cool thing is your approach to the various enemy types will be entirely different. There was barely any need to use the cover mechanics in the first chapter, as aliens run into melee range. But as you face off against armed opponents, it starts to feel more gears-like due to the standoff nature of the gunfight. The level design is one of the game's weaknesses in my opinion. They're very linear in nature, with very little attempt at perceived choice either. As far as expectations go, I think the feel of the game shouldn't be compared to previous Aliens titles. There is a distinct lack of horror or fear within your environment, as the game is more action-oriented and focuses on how you play to delete them from existence. This is clearly intentional as the fast-paced nature of each level really makes this experience what it is. During combat there's barely any time to breathe, with special enemies capable of crippling a single teammate if caught by them. A few issues that we had, the game has a number of invisible walls, often blocking you from what would have been a nice vantage point to fight from. On a rare occasion, the audio for an in-game effect would infinitely loop over the background music. I had this visual bug when going back through one of the doors that didn't appear on Bias's screen. No reconnect to game, so if someone crashes or loses connection, it's back to the start for you. I think in general, these aren't even remotely game-breaking, and certainly won't overshadow the fantastic gameplay. Strangely, on a few of our games, matchmaking wasn't able to find us a third player, despite us playing close after launch. I can't say we expected that, but the AI replacement seemed good enough to not be an issue on standard difficulty. Although the lack of ability use and enemy prioritization made it clear that as you increase the difficulty, the lack of a third real player starts to make a difference. Ultimately, we had a great time playing and still have a bunch of loadouts we want to unlock and try out. It's not completely polished, but the effort was clearly put in the right areas to make this a fun squad-based experience. When it comes to game adaptations of movies and pre-existing content, they can be pretty hit and miss. Both the Alien and Predator IPs have had their fair share of flops, but for me and Nex, Aliens Fireteam Elite is not one of them. This game really shines in its action, combat, gunplay and wave style attack and defense scenarios. It has all of the feel of a true co-op game, meaning it's probably best played with friends, alongside the atmosphere, environment and feel of the source material, which history has shown us can be a pretty difficult thing to pull off. And all of this is topped off with some decent depth with weapons, gear, consumables, cosmetics and your own class customization options, allowing you to tailor how you want to play and how you want to contribute to the rest of your fire team. However, it wouldn't be a balanced review without going over some of the problem points. And there are a few areas of the game where it falters slightly. Firstly, as Nex touched on earlier, the levels are very linear. There are almost no deviations from the main track of the mission, which ultimately means that you feel a bit railroaded as you go through each level. Offshoots from the main path are very short, and 99% of the time they have nothing at the end of them. This means that there's really no incentive to explore, and areas that look accessible block you off with invisible walls, making some levels feel a little bit shallow. 
There is also an issue with how alive and soulful the game feels, and for me this really stems from the NPCs and the home base which you go to and from as you prepare for missions. This area of the game really just has a placeholder feeling, where NPCs just stand around not really doing anything. They all have kind of a cardboard cutout feel, and most of the dialogue and interactions just feel a bit lifeless. Overall, we gave Aliens Fireteam Elite a 3.5 out of 5. And for us, it's a play. Even more so if you're planning to play with a group of friends. At its core, it's just a great, fun, simple shooter. And yes, it does have some issues, but overall it's a solid co-op game that will give you hours of fun while you try to shoot, blast and flame your way through waves of enemies. Let us know in the comments what you think of the game, or whether or not you agree with our review. We're the Bullet Sponges, and we'll see you in the next one.